Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. California AG threatens to arrest Sheriff Hutchins, Trump drops brutal warning. Communist California's Attorney General Xavier Becerra has threatened to arrest Orange County Sheriff Sandra Hutchins for helping ICE catch criminal illegal aliens. Now, President Donald Trump has a warning for the blue state buffoon. You don't want to miss this. The story of heroic Orange County Sheriff Sandra Hutchins continues to roll out like thunder over the headlines as California's deranged Attorney General Xavier Becerra threatens to make an example out of her for helping immigration and customs enforcement agents capture dangerous criminal illegal aliens. Sheriff Hutchins shocked the nation on Monday, March 26, 2018, when she began publishing every single inmate's release date with the exact time of day, according to Daily Caller. Sheriff Hutchins hasn't been shy about why the Orange County Sheriff's Department decided to make this change to their existing online database known as Who's in Jail. An official statement published on the Orange County Sheriff's Department website read in part, Sheriff Hutchins joined law enforcement leaders across the state in opposing SB 54 when the legislation was first proposed in December 2016 as provisions in the bill hindered collaborative efforts to remove serious offenders from the community. Additionally, the law is inconsistent with widely accepted best practices of open communication amongst all levels of law enforcement. Both Sheriff Hutchins and Under Sheriff Don Barnes actively engaged with legislators to encourage defeat of the bill. While these efforts resulted in the removal of some harmful sections of the bill, the final version limited communication in a way that puts the public at risk. Sheriff Sandra Hutchins said, SB 54 makes local law enforcement's job more difficult and requires bureaucratic processes that could allow dangerous individuals to fall through the cracks of our justice system. My department, however, remains committed to cooperating fully with federal authorities in all areas where I have discretion to remove serious criminals from our community. Earlier in the week, California Attorney General Xavier Becerra publicly rebuked Sheriff Sandra Hutchins during a press event and warned that he was willing to engage the sheriff in a legal battle. Becerra didn't stop there, he also confirmed his threat to arrest Sheriff Hutchins when questioned by a reporter. State law is state law. And it is my job to enforce state law. I will do so. And we want to make sure that every jurisdiction including Orange County, understand what state law requires of the people and the subdivisions of the state of California," Becerra said. A reporter then asked Becerra, does that mean a lawsuit of the sheriff's department or the arrest of the sheriff? Becerra replied, I think I just answered that. This nasty threat from California's attorney general against Sheriff Hutchins has now caught the attention of President Donald Trump, and he isn't happy about it. On Wednesday, March 28. Trump rang out his support over Twitter for the people of Orange County and their embattled sheriff which also served as a warning to Becerra and all of the upstate pricks in Sacramento. My administration stands in solidarity with the brave citizens in Orange County defending their rights against California's illegal and unconstitutional sanctuary policies. California's sanctuary laws release known dangerous criminals into communities across the state. All citizens have the right to be protected by federal law and strong borders," Trump wrote. I think it's safe to assume that President Trump has Sheriff Hutchins back on this one and that he supports the constitutional rights of those who live in Orange County, California. The fact of the matter here is that California's leadership is trying to fast-track the left's plan to replace their voting base with illegal immigrants by any means necessary. It's only when someone like Sheriff Hutchins stands up to the dictators in Sacramento and makes the decision to honor our federal immigration laws that we see the left's ugly head appear so prominently. Becerra will undoubtedly continue to threaten and intimidate the Orange County Sheriff's Department for doing what is lawful, and in return, Trump will answer back with the full weight of the federal government and millions of American patriots behind him. Please pray for Sheriff Hutchins as she continues to blaze a trail in California like a new age pioneer for the rest of America to follow.
12 HRS after supporting Trump in her big show premiere, Roseanne Barr got insane news. The numbers are in, and just like November of 2016, we discover that it's Trump supporters for the win. Tuesday night's highly anticipated Roseanne reboot was a smashing success, according to Yahoo, who reports that the ratings are breaking records. The first episode in the double episode opener is reported to have drawn 17.7 million pairs of eyes and have a 4.9 rating in adults 18 to 49. The second episode at 8.30 p.m. rose even higher to 18.6 million viewers and a 5.3 in 18 to 49. For the 8 p.m. hour, Roseanne averaged a 5.1 in 18 to 49 and 18.2 million viewers. To make the success even more impressive is the fact that this broadcast shows an audience that was up 10% from the May 1997 finale telecast 21 years ago and topped the viewership of the final 12 telecasts of the original run's 1996-97 season. Despite the obviously pro-Trump main character, Roseanne scored as the highest-rated show on entertainment television in six years among adults 18 to 49 and TV's highest-rated comedy telecast on any night in three half-years since September 22, 2014. It is the top-scripted telecast this season only behind the post-Super Bowl episode of This Is Us. The question on many TV executives' minds right now is no doubt why? Why did this simple? Revamp of classic break records and bring in more viewers than the other, more politically correct reboots, i.e. Will and Grace. According to Breitbart News, it's their approach to the modern-day problems that families face being politically divided and the fact that they don't shy away from showing both sides of the issue. Tuesday night's two-episode revival of Roseanne launched with the same emotional flair that made the original Connor family working-class comedy and 90s cult classic updated for the millennial agent set in the Trump era. After a 20-year hiatus, the magnanimous matriarch Roseanne Barr is reunited with her on-screen husband Dan, John Goodman, and the pair face new family challenges. Roseanne's unemployed daughter Darlene, Sarah Gilbert, has moved in with her two children, Becky, Alicia Goranson, widowed, struggles to become a surrogate, and Jackie, Laurie Metcalf, clashes with Roseanne over the election of Donald Trump. One emotional moment manufactures a rare TV sighting, a flyover state and is an offering an honest and raw, reason-based rationale for supporting Trump. He talked about jobs, Jackie. Roseanne says to her nasty woman t-shirt clad sister, who vocally supported Hillary Clinton but walked into the booth and voted for Green Party candidate Jill Stein. He said he'd shake things up. I mean, this might come as a complete shock to you. But we almost lost our house, the way things are going. Moments later, just before the family eats dinner, Roseanne says a prayer, she asks Jackie, would you like to take a knee? In which she thanks God for her son DJ's, Michael Fishman, safe return home from his military service in Syria and most of all Lord, thank you, for making America great again. Though the reboot is not steeped in political party politics, Roseanne admits, to the New York Times, that she wanted to have that dialogue about families torn apart by the election and their political differences of opinion and how we handle it. I thought that this was an important thing to say at this time. Roseanne Barr told the Times, it's about how families are still struggling and what they do about it. There's an arc in this season, and it's the closest I've been to doing what I want to do, the 65-year-old said. It's about everything in our country. It's about opioids and health care. How we deal with whole new issues that we didn't even have before, like gender-fluid kids. How working-class people, how and why they elected Trump. It's an accurate portrayal of these people and people like them, Roseanne said of Trump voters. In terms of what they think, and how they feel when they are the ones who send their kids over to fight. We've been in wars for a long, long time which everybody seems to forget, but working-class people don't forget it because their kids are in it. The second episode, Dressed to Impress, follows Darlene's gender-fluid son Mark, who enjoys wearing girls' clothing. The episode is dominated by familiar fare, school bullies, the pain of unfulfilled-like goals, and a parent's penchant for fixing their children's, or grandchildren's, problems. The cast, and the couch, 
is the same as the original award-winning show but the sharp punchlines still land, and family values remain real. Hollywood has consistently produced liberal television for our consumption and actors and actresses for our children to look up to, and America is over it. That was proven by the ratings that this anti-liberal narrative show brought with it. While it's fully within the rights of each studio or executive to decide to produce whatever programming they feel like making, if it's really about the money, and not about brainwashing, we should start to see a lot more conservative inclusive content. HT, Yahoo, Breitbart News.